Hello and welcome to the session on coordinate geometry. This is brought to you by Handa Kafanda. Let us learn few more fun day. Say I am given a point x1, y1 and a line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. If the point x1, y1 lies on the line, that would mean when I put x1, y1 in the equation of the line, it will be equal to 0. That is ax1 plus by 1 plus c will be equal to 0 if x1, y1 lies on the line. If it does not lie on the line, then there will be a perpendicular distance between the two. That can be found out by put the x1, y1 in the equation of the line. You will get ax1 plus by 1. That has to be non-zero because the point does not lie on the line. Divided by square root of a square plus b square. Since it is a distance, it has to be the mod or it has to be a positive quantity. What if I am given two lines which are parallel to each other? If the two lines are parallel to each other, that would mean that their x coefficient and their y coefficient will be equal to each other. So, it will be of the format of ax, ax and by However, their constant terms have to differ, which I have taken as c1 and c2. They need to differ because of the simple reason as, let's say if they don't, what will happen? It will become the same line. So, if they differ, they will also have a perpendicular distance between them and that distance can be found out by taking this mod of c1 minus c2 difference of the constant terms divided by square root of a square plus b square. Let us look at another case. Say I am given two lines and their slope is m1 and m2. So if these two are my lines, they will make two angles with each other. Let us let me say that the acute angle form is alpha. So then tan of alpha is given by m1 minus m2 m1 and m2 mod of that. So, if the two lines are parallel, what will happen? Alpha will be equal to 0. That means tan alpha will be 0. That will mean the numerator has to become 0. That is, if m1 minus m2 is 0, m1 is equal to m2. And that is the condition for lines to be parallel to each other. What if the two lines are perpendicular to each other? That will mean alpha will be equal to 90 degree. And that would mean tan alpha will tend to infinity. For tan alpha to tend to infinity, on the right hand side, my denominator should become 0. If my denominator becomes 0, 1 plus m1, m2 is 0. That will mean that the product of these slopes, that is m1, m2, should be equal to minus 1. And that is the condition for lines to be perpendicular to each other. Let us look at coordinate geometry in case of triangles. Say, I am given a triangle ABC, which has A as x1, y1, B as x2, y2, and C as x3, y3. With the help of the distance formula, I can find out all these distances. That is, BC can be written as A, AC can be written as small b, and BA can be written as small c. Please note what I have done is, I have written the side A is opposite to point A, side B is opposite to point B, and the side C is opposite to point C. Suppose this emerges as an equilateral triangle, you can use that idea. Maybe it emerges as a right angle triangle, you can use that formula. But if it does not emerge at anything specific, then you can use the formula for area as half of the determinant x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1 and x3, y3, 1. For those of you who have forgotten or you don't remember how to solve the determinant, this is the complete formula. How do we do get it? Say, first of all, I will take any row. I have taken x1 by x2 and x3. I will write those points x1, x2 and x3 with an alternate plus and a minus sign. That is plus x1, minus x2 and plus x3. And I will multiply them. I will multiply x1 with what? When I take x1, I remove that row and column. So I am left with just this portion. That will be y2 minus y3. Once again, it is cross. y2 minus y3. Second one minus x2, what will it be multiplied with? That means I will remove this row and this column. So I will be left with y11 and y31. So it will be y1 into 1, that is y1, minus y3 into 1 or minus y3. Then I will move x3 row and column. So I am left with y1, y2, 1 and 1. This will once again be y1 minus y2 into 1 or y1 minus y2. Please remember if this comes out as a negative value, your area is the mod of that particular value. Now, if I want to look at a few specific points inside the uh, inside the triangle, say the circumcenter, 
We know that for a right angle triangle, circumcenter is the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Or, so to say, the circumcenter H, K is a point with which as the center you can draw a circle outside the triangle. That is, the point H, K is equidistant from all the three vertices. So, when I am drawing a circle around it, see how bad I am at drawing. Uh, so, all these distances are the radii and they are equal. So, to say H, K is equidistant from X1 by 1, X2 by 2 and X3 by 3. And we can use that for a formula. H minus X1 plus K minus whole square plus K minus Y1 whole square will be equal to the distance between H, K and X2 by 2. That is H minus X2 whole square plus K minus Y2 whole square will be equal to the distance between H, K and X3 by 3. That is H minus X3 plus K minus Y3, both of them whole square. Solving these equations, I can get the value of H, K. The in center or the point from which you can draw a circle inside the triangle, that can be determined by AX1 plus BX2 plus CX3 by A plus B plus C. Once again, where A is the length of the side and X1 by 1 are the coordinates. And similar for the Y coordinate, AY1 plus BY2 plus C by 3 divided by A plus B plus C. The centroid or the point of intersection of the medians, that is probably the simplest to find out. That is X1 plus X2 plus X3 by 3, comma Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 by 3. Suppose you got lucky and you got that your triangle is an equilateral triangle. In that case, all three will be the same points and you can determine them with any of the formulas that you like. Let us look at coordinate geometry in case of circles. The general equation of a circle is given by x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. Suppose I already know the center of the circle as h, k and the radius as r. Then I can write down the equation of the circle as x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square is equal to 1. Why is it so? The distance between two points x and y and h, k. Say my random point on the circumference is x, y. That distance is r and it remains constant. So if you remember the distance formula, it was x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square under root was equal to the distance. That is the idea here x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square, square root will be the radius or if I remove the square root from both sides, it becomes r square. In simpler format, if the center is at the origin, in that case, what will I get? x square plus y square is equal to r square. If I compare the general formula to the specific equation, I can find out that the center of the circle, if a general equation is given, will be minus g comma minus f. The radius, however, will be square root of g square plus f square minus c. If I am looking at an ellipse, and let's say the semi-major axis is a and the semi-minor axis is b, in that case, the equation of the ellipse is given by x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. The area is pi ab and the perimeter is pi times a plus b. That wraps up the session on coordinate geometry. Please stay tuned at Handa Kafanda to watch other videos on other chapters. Thank you.